Thank you for tuning in to Androna Talks Radio. Gathering as one in our sovereign truth from a galactic perspective. Exploring our world with new ideas, knowledge and a promise of a better future. Galactic discussions for collective minded people. Androna Talks. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today at Androna Talks Radio. And we have a guest today with an update. Uh, jo- Chris will be joining us today, and we're going to be getting an update regarding the Yellow Vest and having some other discussions regarding what has been going on. And we've had a long period of time where it's been quite quiet, but believe me, there's been a lot of activity going on in the background and a lot of data has been collected, not just from uh, the yellow vest, which is something that Chris is keeping track of and reviewing online and finding out because he is able to translate. Many of these videos are in in French. And so um, uh, kind of putting it all together and piecing it together and seeing what's going on. And I have been working with many clients and also my daily and nightly communications that come up and uh, this is helping me to get an understanding of what's going on around us and keeping everyone up to date as much as possible, keeping everyone safe as much as possible and uh, dealing with uh, some of the incidences at hand. I don't, I know that we're, as a group, we're making some changes because they're not happy. They're definitely not happy, and then they keep on trying to put in a new spin. But um, uh, we're going to have a discussion about this, so I'm just going to welcome in Chris. Hello, Chris. How are you today? Hi, Jess. I'm great. I'm on fire. Yeah, you're on fire fire today. (laughs) <laughs> I have my yellow my yellow as t-shirts with no master, no fear, only freedom and divine sovereignty. I'm ready. Well, that's the way to be. And uh, I have to get that version of it because I have a yellow vest t-shirt that I wear. And mm. I I like that other one that we kind of, you kind of suggested that we should kind of tweak a bit and mm. add those other pieces of information, no master, no fear. And, and then the Andronica symbols on them. Yeah. And, um, and that yellow yeah. vest is vib- vibrating. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the highest intention for humanity. So oh, the yellow yes. vest is not about um, oppression. We're going to s- turn it into freedom and also sovereignty for humanity. And mm. as they are, you know, kind of uh, leading the way. Now, the people people of France are paving the way for freedom. The people of each nation are paving the way for freedom. But um, we've discovered that there's someone else that's trying to take credit for this. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Someone else that came in the game, uh, what, maybe a month ago or so, maybe earlier. But we definitely discovered him uh, do you want us to talk about that right now? Yeah, let's let's wanna... get right into it because in, right, and here okay. again we've had this discussion before. We're gonna we're gonna say the name Joaquin Phoenix oh, and yeah. the Joker. So they uh, created this energy, um, you know, when they really want to promote something. I will tell you that I have heard and seen um, that they've had ads and promotions all over Europe for the Joker even in some of the remote areas of Europe. And they are really pushing some other agenda that, that is, 
trying to harness and latch on to something that um, identifies as liberation and freedom for the people. And everywhere I look, people are embracing this this anarchist um, concept, converting it into what Joaquin Phoenix has brought to the table. But um, what what if it's if it's Draco influenced? So are we going to give away the hard work and effort that we are proclaiming our sovereignty just to be under thumb of the Dracos? And I think that most people just are not awakened enough to see this. They, they'll jump from one slave system to another. And why are, they, why are they doing this? Because they're not fully proclaiming their sovereignty. They're not asking to be aligned properly with the divine source on an individual basis, which creates blind spots, so they can't fully see. And so they're perpetually embracing people, embracing other um, actions, movement, movements, or whatever, blindly. They're not seeing through it. Because if they were seeing through it, this, what we're doing is, this is not for any group, this is not for any um uh, secret society this is not for any like label or you know movement or anything like that it is to remind people just to be sovereign but yet I remind people to be sovereign and then I, they come back to me and they say did you hear what's this is what so and so is teaching or, or we should be listening to them and I'm like well why why do we need to be listening to this person why do we need to take the Joker label to validate what people are doing because they don't feel confident enough in what they're doing to stand on its own. And that is reminding everyone that we're still in that slave system. What do you think, Chris? No, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> especially when I was, you know, a year ago uh, when the Yellow Vest started, already had the feeling that, um, you know, we talk about The Economist and how it was five months before. They already had on the cover The Economist 2017, before the election of Macron already, the Yellow Vest and the protest, everything was, was already organized and, and set up. So I had a feeling there was already something that was not completely clear to that. But what was beautiful is that eventually from... Uh, in the beginning, they, 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 they wanted to use, especially Macron, Jupiter, Dionysus, whatever, is uh, whatever other beings that might be connected to him. Um, uh, they were trying to trigger the Yellow Vest movement in order for them to be able to um, make them violent. And once they were violent, they could have all the um, all the reasons to, to 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 vote these new bills that would literally. Uh, uh, kill the freedom of speech in France, the freedom to protest, the freedom to express your opinion if it, it's not in alignment with, uh, with Dionysus Micron. So eventually the Yellow Vest really quickly by talking to each other something they would not uh, expect they start to talk to each other and realize that, wait a minute, I'm not alone here, you know, in my little apartment, barely, barely uh, making uh, hands meet uh, on the 15th of the month, I don't have any food. Now I realize that by talking to others, guess what? There are other people in my situation and they realize really quickly that that yellow vest, even if it's a piece of fabric that simply symbolizes the fact that you're in danger and you want to be seen and heard, um, they realize that beyond that, they quickly, instead of focusing, like the government wanted them to, through the media, to portray the Yellow Vest as uh, pretty much everything under the sun, racist, uh, homophobic, I mean, the whole thing, but pedophile. That's the only thing that haven't been uh, uh, labeled as. The Yellow Vest have done something different. They realize, wait a minute, you are maybe having different opinion than I have when it comes to politics or religion or immigration, but at the end of the day, let's focus on what unite us, not on what divide us. And that is something they didn't expect. So they had, they realized that they could, have, they, they, they could lose eventually the control of, uh, of the Yellow Vest movement. And quickly they had to go to the next step, which was to 
um, discredit them in any way possible, discredit the symbol of Yellow Vest. But then he went further. Remember a few reports before I was I was asking pretty much uh, for the Yellow Vest to not wear their vest anymore. Not because the symbol on itself is bad, but it was li limiting them. And since, as you wear that yellow vest, automatically because of the great work of the media propaganda, which is the uh, uh, the government media, um, that is relaying literally the Macron agenda, because they are owned by all Mac uh, by Macron, Macron's best friends. Um, they they literally found them found themselves imprisoned into a uh, perception that they were racist, violent, idiots. They had no uh, no understanding of the situation, and and so they were kind of like in a cul de sac. But once they start to remove that and said, you know what, yellow vest simply means one thing. It's a piece of fabric, yes, but what it really means is, under the piece of fabric, there is a citizen, there is a human being. And we are, it's beyond race, beyond religion, beyond belief system, beyond political orientation. It's beyond all that. It's just us as human beings, breathing, working, and deserving freedom. And that is something that they didn't expect. So, of course, it's, you know, it's panic right now in, in France since um, they thought that after the summer, they would literally kill it bit by bit because they saw that all these protests start to have less and less people in the street. First, because the violent um, reaction of the police obviously scared a lot of people. I mean, I have to pretty much, um, I made the numbers here, I checked the numbers of what happened in one year. Um, uh, let me see here, I have it somewhere. There is... 27 people that lost an eye, two more this weekend. There is uh, five people that lost an, uh, a hand, two people that lost a foot. Some other people lost testicles and all kinds of organs because of the uh, rubber bullet, the flash ball, and because of the uh, flash bang, which is these grenade they throw. Normally they're supposed to throw them on the floor, but they throw them in the air and when it explodes, guess what? It's a little TNT um, explosive. Um, there is 2,800 serious injuries. Serious. I mean, people, the life is over. Um, 11,000 people went to jail for at least 48 hours for no reason. They found a paper mask. They found little, uh, maybe uh, some saline's uh, serum in your bag. Boom, automatically, since they were that low after the third act, which was in January, when they had hundreds of thousands of people super angry on the Champs-Elysees and the, the police was literally to a point where they were overwhelmed. We heard that at that time, Macron um, was ready to escape uh, the Elysium Palace with an helicopter because he thought that was the end of it. That was the end of him. So he got so scared and he was so pissed about that. His ego was bruised to a point where he realized that the only option here was to have a new Minister of Interior. His name is Castaner. Castaner in French is very close to Castanier, which is an old guy. Castanier means um, to, 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 to Castagne. It's like a uh, uh, it's like, um, I say that in English, I'm trying to figure it out, I'm sure that people listening might, uh, might have the translation, it's like to, to, to have a beat up, right? So his name is kind of proper if you think about it. This guy was part of the mafia, working with the mafia for a long time, and suddenly becomes, you know, prime minister, uh, minister of, sorry, of interior, meaning controlling the whole police. So he started to, Macron gave him some orders to be extremely strong and using weapons that are um, banned by the Geneva Treaty because they are considered as war weapons, which is flashball and uh, these grenades and the gas, which I'm going to talk a little bit in a, in, a, in a little bit about. They changed the, the the components of that gas, and now, I mean, it's, it's getting to a point they're literally poisoning their people, police included. I mean, it gets to a point of violence that is beyond anything um, we have seen before. 
also on these 11,000 people jailed for 24, 24 to 48 hours in a place with no food, no water. They were insulted. They had to pee literally on themselves. I mean, it's it just ridiculous. Forced them to sign any kind of paper um, acknowledging that they did something wrong and they had no lawyers because they couldn't even give a phone call. I mean, it's just these are things that you would see in old Russia or maybe in China, but not here. This is the country of uh, human rights, where human rights were created. On these 11,000 people, 3,000 were sent to trial, literally after 24 hours, sent directly to trial and sentenced. 1,000 were sentenced to six months to three years of jail for nothing. Literally, the, 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 they, they create all these, whatever the police says anyway is rules. So if the police says and create all these fake um uh, fake uh, investigation saying, oh, right, well, uh, the judge says, well, you know what, you were found with uh, serum and paper mask, that means automatically you were intending to have violent protest to destroy uh, uh, property and therefore um, we send you to jail. They didn't even commit anything. They were just going to the protest. That's how it is in France. So they have literally, I mean, the freedom of speech, the freedom of being represented properly uh, in a court of, uh, in a trial doesn't exist. From the magistrate to the lawyers to the judges, they're all corrupted, Freemason working under the same group that's controlled by, uh, you know, Macron and Macron controlled by the EU, the EU and the EU controlled by, you know, the UN and so on. So we can definitely see here the imprint of these non-human beings, these non-human groups that are forcing their agenda through politicians, judiciary systems, and, and, uh, and other systems. So <clears throat> if you would say these numbers and saying, oh, that's in Chile, people are like, oh, wow, yeah, well, you know, we expect that because they have dictators over there. But when you say that's happening in France, I mean, most of the people are shocked, like, wait a minute, that's what? That's not possible. They are targeting journalists. There was an American journalist yesterday, because it was the first year anniversary, I'm going with that in a minute, that got, I mean, got arrested in a way I've never seen. The poor guy had no clue what was happening to him, simply because he tried, they, 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 they went after one, his cameraman, and he, you know, the police, he was too close and the police grabbed him and, you know, were ready to arrest him and he just wanted to grab his friend and pull him out oh my god i mean poor guy had the worst 15 minutes of his life so i mean there's another press guy that has a mask and everything he was talking to some yellow s and suddenly out of nowhere the police sent one of these grenade in the air exploded in his face and exploded the mask he had one of these masks with a glass i mean it is black plastic all over his face and you know with a mask so he could breathe the whole thing destroyed his face in blood they arrest uh, journalists they arrest um, human rights um, witness that are there to see what's going on they arrest everyone that can witness the violence of the police which is by the way completely legal they said clearly it is there are two types of violence the legal violence and the illegal violence legal violence is if it's um if if, if the government push that as a law, as a bill, automatically, whatever the police does, they are super protected. So it doesn't matter what the, the people do, they will never be successful in, uh, in, 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 in being heard. So going back to the one year, sadly, this weekend, 16, 17, Saturday and Sunday, was the one year anniversary of the first Yellow Vest protest last year in 2018, 53 weekends. And... They thought that this, you know, they, they said, all right, maybe in the in the summer, not everybody, because people get tired. I mean, a lot of people lost everything by going to the process every Saturday. And most of the people are working. They're working people, 90% of them. Um, well, here is the story. I have to say that I was very, very, very upset this weekend when I was watching what was going on. Um, because they wanted to do things the proper way. They wanted to go to the to the the city hall and um, see the the prefect. The prefect is the one that's each like for example the the big region of Paris has a prefect, and the prefect is directly answering to Macron, not even to the minister of interior. 
And those guys are controlling the whole police and the gendarmerie and, you know, all these different factions uh, that are composing the French police. They went to see him and say, hey, we want to do a protest and we want it to be declared and we have different itineraries. And so the prefect said no to several of them and only accepted one that started Place de l'Italie, which is uh, a place in, in Paris, and, uh, and then, you know, and, and approved that they would start from there at two o'clock in the afternoon and go to a certain place after that to a certain time. So they do that so that the police can, you know, pretty much prepare themselves. They don't want to be declared as violent protest or illegal protest because then it's more violent. They want to play by the rule. So what happened, all these people coming from everywhere in France, um, barely with no money, but they, they did the effort, even disabled people in these electric chairs that couldn't, couldn't speak, came alone. I mean, we don't even know how they did that. People were so motivated to, to be there. At around nine o'clock in the morning, they started to arrive. There was only 20 cops in that place. Now you have to see that place is a huge runabout with one lane, two traffic lane on the outside, then a little ring of a park like with, you know, with trees and, and, uh, and concrete, and then another ring for circulation. It's a huge place with five or six big boulevards connecting to that. There was only 20 cops at the time. And <clears throat> when they were coming in, they let them come in, knowing that around two o'clock there would be enough people, you know, to start the protest. Since well, that was the gathering point. The police at the time, before two o'clock, were saying to some of these yellow vests, if you enter in there, you're going to be destroyed. We're going to, <laughs> you're going to be killed, just so you know. But they didn't pay attention. They were like, well, you know, same threatening tactics that they usually do. So they went in. They went motivated. At 1.55, five minutes before the start, when everybody was gathered, and I'm talking about thousands of people, suddenly the prefect uh, of Paris the head of the police of Paris, gave an announcement that he cancelled that protest. So it went from legal to illegal, five minutes before the start. The person that was, you know, uh, responsible to organize that whole protest, it's a guy that we see on television, the Yellow Vest, we see him uh, all the time, was pissed. Because he says now it becomes legal, that means police can do whatever they want, and we have worked so hard to have it approved within 20 minutes i mean hundreds of cops came f through each uh, boulevard they were coming and closing all the exits so they couldn't get out of there and the next thing you know they start to bombard literally it i mean it, it was a scene of war they were sending hundreds of tear gas capsules uh, you know these uh, containers um, they were sending dozens and dozens and dozens of um, explosives supposedly to disperse the crowd, but they were not sending in, sending these things on the floor that are supposed to. They were sending in, they're launching them in the air. Now imagine you have thousands of people stuck in a place they cannot get out, okay? It's a massacre. It's a butchery. People go so upset, of course. Now, on the top of it, to make sure to make it even worse, normally for a few, after three or four weekends, they quickly understood that if they declare an, 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 you know, an itinerary for a protest, they were cleaning, the city was cleaning all the work sites along that place. And also, they were putting all these uh, plywoods on the windows of every banks and everything, all, you know, the you know, uh, jewelry plates, you know, all the expensive things, things that represent money, because they knew that some of these black block would eventually destroy them. Well, funny enough, they chose and approved that place for one reason, one reason only. There was a lot of work going on around that place with, I mean, they call it literally a um, Home Depot in open air. I mean, you had everything you wanted, bricks, wood, barriers, metal, I mean, everything you wanted. So they let the black block coming in out of nowhere, of course, don't know how these guys came in. And within this black block, there were some police. We saw some videos when they bring people, yellow vest and bring them through the police and say, hey, wait a minute, we're part of the police too. I mean, 
we saw them, their videos, when you see these black blocks, police guys with stone in their hands, throwing stone to the cops. So they were staging that whole thing. And of course, once the people were trapped and super upset, guess what? When you're trapped and you want to survive, and because it was survival, people were collapsing, literally losing consciousness because of the gas. The gas have cyanide in there. They changed the component of the gas like six months ago. Now they have cyanide in there. That is a poison. It's literally with if you if you if you breathe wow. too much of it, you you bleed from the nose. You have internal bleeding. You 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 lose consciousness. Many people were found on the floor unconscious. Those who could escape try to, but they had no exit. So they did that for a while, for a few hours. Of course, the bla- I mean, the black bloc were there to entice the hate, and then most of the it was very easy for the crowd to follow, and they were bombarding the cops, was of course with uh, bricks and this and that. And of course, who was there present? All the news medias. All the, you know, the whole thing was staged. You know, you know, Chris. Um I think it was Rolf that brought up that uh, he was looking at some information regarding the protests in Hong Kong. And there was this, uh, I guess it was the police that were integrating with the group. And then they just get in their vehicle afterwards and sort of like acted like they were part of the protest. And so you have these groups that are coming in clearly you know, to uh, uh, silently integrate and to discuss, you know, to, to find out what's going on, the underground part of it in the organization to um, peacefully protest. And so whether they're um, just integrating and, and probably uh, finding out who are, who are the perpetrators or, or those the leaders and the ones that are rallying people to continue on the movement but probably finding out where their families are at and uh, probably levels of oppression follow afterwards, but even worse, uh, like the black blocks to discredit what they're doing and to bring in this violence. So initially, you know, the protest began and then it started to get into violence and then they started to acknowledge the black blocks were there. Um, and then that settled down and the summer was, was not as um, active, and then all of a sudden it started amping up again. Is, is with and then the black blocks are more present again. Um, is is this correct? Absolutely correct. Now they are dressed in black, and even the yellow vest and the, some of the police representative were saying, um, "We know who they are. We know where they live. We know how many they are." We know how they communicate. We know what are their strategies, how they come in, how they come out, and what is their goal. But we have orders from the government to not intervene. What does that tell you? Right. So it's very clear. Now, mm-hmm. there's a begin. I mean, these guys, of course, they are, they are dressed in black. And it's very easy. Anybody can dress in black. So we have these kids that are very rich extremely rich that are bored that want to destroy things and and feel like a sensation of adrenaline i guess you have the real black blocks but most of them wanted to protect the yellow vest against the police they are not afraid of the police and then you have all the other factions in there it might be police might be different things and the police in there it's always the same one it's called the back bac uh, is the anti-criminality brigades those are i mean those are animals I mean, they don't give a damn if you're an old lady, a kid, a journalist. They go there to beat up and break Yellow Vest. That's what they go for. Every time you see all these videos with extremely violent videos, 90% of the time it's them. They're responsible on the 25 eyes that have been you know, destroyed. People are blind of one eye. I mean, 20, 20 of them is from those guys because they don't care. They just go there to war. They are so they are trained literally to be violent because normally they are trained to go into the projects where you have all these you know violent kids and gangs and that's what they're trained for. So <clears throat> most of the only police that's really trained for that type of repression is uh, CRS. It's uh, part of military and those guys are not violent. I mean they don't want to be violent. Um, right now we have seen these officers of the back um, dressed as uh, uh, journalists. 
but the yellow vest always caught them. <laughs> so it's kind of funny because they can see the, the signs most of the time. Anyway, it's getting worse and worse. And now going back to um, Joaquin Phoenix, that movie came out to the Joker. All right. Extremely violent. Some people, I mean, obviously, were even leaving the, 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 the movie theaters because it was too violent. But for some reason. And they were hiring be, police forces in, in, in L.A., I believe. To make yep. sure that riots wouldn't break out, yeah. Yeah, and uh, they were even saying in France that they advised the police and the firemen to not go there and, and see the movies. I don't even know why. But anyway, <clears throat> we have seen in, you know, talking earlier with you just maybe a month ago, that Joaquin Phoenix was connected, definitely was connected to Dionysus, and uh, one of his goal was to entice violence. And like you said earlier, is to um, to override the system and hijack pretty much the movement of freedom uh, that you know not just the LOS, but every in every country um, humans are fighting for their rights and to be free. And what was amazing for me is to see suddenly that when that movie came out, two things happened. One, suddenly. Some people start to say, well, you know what? It's a guy that's unheard, unseen, um, is victim of so much injustice. And the only way for him to be heard is to, you know, go into violence. And so it's a symbol of someone that is, you know, like a yellow vest, like the, the, the regular people that are fighting for their freedom. And it's the symbol of the fight against oppression, oligarchy and all that stuff. And I couldn't believe my ears when I heard that. Next thing you know, that was a week ago, you see the LOS with all these banners that ask for freedom, this and that. And what do you see on the symbol there? The Joker. I mean, my blood turned twice. I mean, it, I, it was, I was shocked to see that. And I realized that not just in France, in every country where there's these protests against the government for any reason, you know, ABC, doesn't matter, they all start to use that symbol. It's spread within a week as the symbol for, for freedom. And that for me was, uh, that was an enigma. They use the symbol of freedom, the very energy and consciousness that is working against the freedom of people, against the sovereignty, trying to enslave them in their dark dominions. And I was, I was shocked. I was shocked because that happened very fast. Now we see that Joachim Phoenix is very active, very present, not just through the protest, but in, I mean, in different, can be closer to you than most of, of, of you know, more he's, than you think. It, it's, it's so he's present. taking on. He's taking on. Um, and whether it's him or, uh, I mean, we know it's the entity behind him. And yeah, I mean, they, they showed that he was working with Dionysus, and I just, I feel like I got more clarity on this is that he was working with Droxala, mm -hmm. and and trying to see their agenda is total annihilation of humanity it is not for humanity so it can be easily misinterpreted that their agenda is you know on the uh side of wanting people to um you know gain their freedom you know they they're not thinking about freedom as much as they're thinking about anarchy and uprooting everything and uh, the Dracos are very much like the reptilians. They would like to see humanity pretty much wiped out, um, just like Andronica shared with us. If they have the ability to just do what they want to do, they will just go into war. Uh, they'll destroy everything, anything that's living, um, all you know, all organic things, and uh, and then you know, encourage those to live underground. I mean, that's that's their agenda. That's what the reptilians have done. And the Dracos have, you know, the similar attribute. It's mostly egocentric ruling. It's, it's um, narcissism, um, completely out of control, uh, you know, d uh, dominion, and just, you know, for the hell of it, stirring things up. Uh, it's part of their, their um, 
their mentality and, and way of thinking. So when they see something like this of people or freedom fighters or people that are, you know, um, peaceful protesters or whatever, it's it's a little bit too boring for them. They, they, they wanted to go to another level and then they're not satisfied with that because this is a form of their entertainment. Their end result is not about truly freedom. So it concerns me and, and both of us were very concerned when we saw that they were adding the Joker as uh, something to that that would exemplify who they are. And believe me, that brings in a whole other message. But I could see the anger in people um, feeling, you know, their their rights are being violated. They're not being heard. Their homeland is being, you know, desecrated through um, a reckless decisions or the government is selling out and they're feeling that they're being displaced. So, you know, of course, uh, different measures are, are you know, f- taking place where they, they, they're going to another extreme. But the end result will not be what they want. The end result will not be freedom. It will just be annihilation of, of the city, the state, the government, the world, you know, if we um, embrace what they're doing or interpret their idea of um, anar- anarchy compared to uh, freedom, that we're looking for sovereignty. We're looking for sovereignty, not anarchy. And, and you're absolutely right, Jess. And this is the exact opposite of the message from uh, Andronicus, you know, which is to intend for the highest potential for humanity. This is the exact opposite. And I was talking to that about that with someone else, uh, you know, a few days ago. And there are, I mean, it's very easy for them to entice the anger. The anger is there. People are angry. The thing is, it's important for the yellow vest and every human, I mean, that are in that situation to understand it's important to canalize your anger and to use it for a positive, in a positive way. I was listening to one of the yellow vests, Jerome uh, Rodriguez, which is someone that lost an eye uh, a few months ago when he didn't do anything, simply because he's one of the faces of the yellow vest, a guy we see a lot of time and a guy that says, I don't want any violence. We don't need to be violent. You need to understand that even the police in front of us are paid like you guys, 1,200 euro a month. These guys are just tools that are used by the government. To, so we fight, we fight. It's, it's, it, they were saying it's slaves fighting against slaves. That's really how the government sees it. You know, the Yellow Vest are these poor people that are considered slave, work, 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 and never have anything for it, as long as the government and those in charge, um, like in the Miller story of uh, Edgar Allan Poe, um, the Miller, it's literally these races, non-human races, that are that find a wonderful way to <laughs> literally use humans for their own pleasure and for their own benefits. And humans have nothing, zero in exchange. The only thing they have in exchange is more misery. And they love it. Now, of course, it's easy to, to, to entice that anger. I mean, I saw it last Saturday. It's very easy for them to do that. And remember, they feed from that. If it's a Draco or, or all these, you know, all these false god, uh, Dionysus and, and the Dracos and Draxala. And let's not forget, by the way, just a little parenthesis here. Michael is the one that gave the power in some way to that Joachim Phoenix, to be able to do his, what, what he has. So I don't forget that Michael is always behind, okay? One of the most jealous, angry, uh, I'm going to say something, but I'm not going to say it, but I mean, I'm so pissed when I'm thinking of him because he's hiding behind those entities, thinking that we're going to focus on them and not right. see what is his real involvement yeah. in this. And I mean, we talk about the most... This being has only one thing. You love me, you I, you take me as an idol, as a god, or I will destroy you. That is the state of mind. Okay? I wonder to what extent he not, was not jealous of humans because they were created, you know, with a true divine potential. And maybe he felt threatened. I don't know. But, I mean, this being... I need to take a breath because I'm pissed. All right. <laughs> Anyway, just take a, so take a breath, of, take a breath. Yeah, take a breath, yeah. <laughs> it is, it, well, because we, we discover how many different ways they've messed with our lives on a personal level, 
on a grander scale with our friends and people we care about and all of these really kind people who just want to know the truth and I've had more than one person say I just I can't believe what my life has been up till this point it's been a game and it's it's not really a game it's it's really hard to look at but if you don't look at it, it, it continues. It does. It won't go away. And and this is the problem. And, and people get angry because they start to see things, and then they're ups, more upset because of what they're seeing. It's like um, they live uh, in that movie. I believe that's what it's called, Roddy Piper. And you know, he puts on the sunglasses and starts to see things as they really are. And it's shocking. It's not a pleasant experience. Especially when you start looking at your relationships or love bites or that your family's been hijacked or, you know, something really horrible. And what do you do? Do you just abandon everything and say there's no hope? Or do you go in and say some of the stuff salvageable? You know, we can, we can ask for the souls to be re- returned back to where they belong and, you know, remove uh, whatever had tried to hijack them. Um, do a reset as much as we can, but you can't fix something if you don't acknowledge it. And this is this is the problem. And um, whether it's perceived as what we do is negative or positive, whatever negative is, but the pie in the sky, let's let's sit on a cloud type of mentality, love and light, whatever you want to call it. And you know, um, you know, ignorance is bliss. Uh, yeah, you might sort of be happy, but underneath. It's not right. And and you know that you can't keep on ignoring the signs. Eventually, something's going to happen. It's like ignoring, you know, your vehicle and it has that, that check engine light on or something like that. And you're looking at it and say, well, I can, you know, imagine I'm going to project that everything's going to be fine and I'm going to get there. And, um, you know, it, that's not realistic. And, and what happens with people that get into these paradigms, they become very angry because it, it, it didn't work out or they become extremely narcissists like some of those teachings where nothing exists outside of myself or I don't know if that's Course of Miracles or something like that. I've dealt with plenty of people in that type of thinking where they you know, actually believe because of the teaching uh, became so extreme that they actually believe nothing exists outside of them. Well, that's pure narcissism. That's not true. And it is not, we're not manifesting something in that way either. So, um, yeah, we, we manifest and we contribute, but technically we're all connected. And so you can't just act as if run over people and take from people and do all these horrible things to people and think, say, well, you know, it doesn't exist because it's all inside of me. So I'm projecting I get what I want. It doesn't matter who I hurt in the process. And that's what I've, I've dealt with plenty of times with people with that um, teaching and mentality. I find that they're very insensitive to other people. And we don't want to become that way. That's another lie and a deception. <clears throat> and we yeah, because yeah, we, we, beca- we, become t- we become like them. And, and that's the difference. I mean, I discovered something we're just talking about that a few hours ago. I realized I reached a point, you know, going to all these sessions um, to realize at this point I'm waking up from a a dream, a nightmare, 50 years of lifetime that I thought was real. And I realized it was it was all a lie. I mean, it was a result of love bites, results of mind control, entanglement, reality pushed on you that you never you never agreed for, never, never never consent to. And it's not something that happened just in this lifetime, but I mean, it's definitely happening many lifetimes since they can go in the past and in the future. But certainly it's important to be brave. It's important, like you said, you know, you can, I've been to all these different groups myself. I mean, I, I had a collection of them. We had to clear them, by the way. This is why it took so long for me to clear these entanglements. But in the same time, I've learned something. All this time, I believed in a lie that I was not powerful enough, in a lie that I was weak, in a lie that I was something that needed external help because, because by myself, 
request was not something good enough or strong enough. And this is the biggest lie there is. The biggest lie there is. And I'm, I'm, these last few days, I'm waking up between sometimes, you know, it's like you wake up from a nightmare and you start to observe it. You're like, whoa, wait a minute. That perception I have of myself for all these years was wrong. It was false. That is not who I am. They, they imprisoned me in that perception of myself for so long. And I want to set myself free, break the chains. And it's important to be able to see it. It's not, I mean, yes, you can be angry, but, you know, it's just, it's, an, it's a positive anger in some way that creates a determination. Like, oh, wait, you know what? This is not happening anymore. I'm going to take the lesson from it. And I'm going to see from, from this, from this point on, I make a decision, a clear decision. I will never be a slave again, ever. And I am my own, I mean, I'm in the best thing there is. I am connected to my higher self, to divine source, always have been, always will be. And nothing will stop me from expressing the divine source within me. And thank you, in the same way I would say, and it sounds weird what I'm going to say, thank you for that experience, because maybe I was not aware of the true potential for all these years who I truly am. But thanks to the bullshit you pulled on me, guess what? You awaken the giant in me. But not the giant, you know, I mean, something really positive. When I mean giant, it, it means a lot of things for me, like I maybe cannot express in this moment. But it's something so positive, and yeah. I feel I feel it, like I'm finally getting a life. Like before, I was, I don't know, half dead. I think I My think you saying when you say the giant in you is is because all of these life situations make people feel disempowered, and yes. if we need to find something within ourselves and remember who we are, and it's not to overrun or to take from others. No, it's, it's it's to just have a sense of knowing that we have a purpose, yes. that we are loved, that we don't need to be anyone's doormat, that we don't we have um, other choices. We don't have to submit to everything. We can find creativity, um, creative ways to um, make a living, and that we can uh, project harmony in our space. We don't have to, um, you know. We, we can join as a unified group to try to neutralize the, the negative effects on humanity. And um, uh, there's, there's some other things that, are, that were going on, and, I, and I'm going to segue this into something else, um, especially around, it was like the Halloween time period where people were saying, I'm, I'm feeling this whole thing with um, witches, and uh, that there was like negative energies and things like that going on. And I kept on seeing it. And I even heard the word hedge, hedge witch, which made me start looking into, you know, some of the people that have called them that. Now, I'm not nervous about witches. You have to realize I grew up in the Boston area. And uh, as a young child, I even, you know, felt the presence of a bunch of witches coming through. And if you read my story, and there's a really weird story where I, I felt like they were coming through my closet. You know, it's like the lion, witch, in the wardrobe type of thing. And But I was a young kid, and uh, they were complaining. They said I had something to do with the witch trials, which I discovered later. I didn't. I was just, a, I was in that lifetime, but I was a child, and I did not um, die in the witch t trials, and I did not have an influence on it. I was probably under the age of 10 or so. And so... Um, but, you know, I did have a lifetime as a, a herbalist or whatever um, over in, in France, which is interesting because we're talking about Fran France. And I remember that we were practicing, we were trying to hold on to our um, herbal remedies and medicines and things like that. Um, and then they were trying to take it away. And this was during the time of the um, Spanish Inquisition. And... Um, you know, we were learning as much as we could, and we, we, I had a very thick book, I remember seeing the book, and, you know, knowing that I had a part in that, and collecting herbs and, and things like that, so, you know, there's a fine line of, of what, you know, people, it's a kind of a, not a fine line, it's actually a broad spec spectrum of what people call a witch, but those that use um, the earth energy, use um, herbalism or whatever, you know, they automatically assume that they're bad, but, you know, 
it's actually the uh, entry level of pharmaceutical work. I mean, early on, it was reserves. That was our medicine, Native American and any culture. So anyhow, <clears throat> I'm, not, I'm not concerned about, you know, the title of which, because I know that I've had lifetimes and I knew that I was, I was murdered in that lifetime in France. Um, well, I was, you know, tortured. Uh, they had me in some kind of um, underground cell um, where I was in, immersed in water and I had to try to float and it was like these bars. I could see the bars very clearly over me so I couldn't get out. And what I thought was interesting is all the women that studied along with me, each one of them walked past me and not one of them said anything or to try to help me. And I was like the uh, poster child for that to uh, get everyone to go underground or just to stop, you know, using these these herbal remedies. And then, you know, people would have to go to the system to get help if they they were sick, which is where we're at right now. Um, so I, I have nothing um, against witches. I understand um, that uh, I do have, well, I have something against using black magic to harm other people. I think there are repercussions to that. And I think that you are conjuring and opening portals that bring in entities. And if you're going to bring in entities, then other people shouldn't have to deal with them. They can stay in your house. <laughs> the rest of the world shouldn't have to deal with them. And, and I see 90% of the time I'm having to deal with what other people have just dumped on the, on our reality. And, you know, that this is, this is the stuff. This is the stuff that's in Joaquin. This is the stuff that's in all these others that we're having to deal with these very, very powerful entities that are able to project and influence entire planet through one movie. And anyhow, I, I felt like something was going on. And, I, and then I saw an article that they were going after Donald Trump about, the, I don't know, 12,000 witches or something like that, trying to do some kind of binding spell. And I'm like, is there something wrong with this picture here? And I just like, is there, has anyone ever like, I don't know if he's the cause of all the problems on this planet. He might not be the most tactful, but I wouldn't say that he's the cause. And um, I could, they unleashed a whole bunch of stuff. They really did. And so, uh, I mean, I felt like I've been doing cleanup. I felt like, you know, someone just opened up the, the sewage and just sent it out into the atmosphere. And I'm like, are you serious? Is it, uh, how, much, how much garbage do we have to take? It's bad enough the stuff that we've been having to deal with. But now, now there's uh, the, all of this other stuff going on. And so, I can, you know, it's, it's been a mess. It's been a real mess. And mm. then, you know, all of a sudden... You know, we have the impeachment going on. And then, of course, right at the same time, the Joker comes out. It's not an accident. They needed power to reject this. That's how this works. If you're going to dabble in this kind of stuff, plan on not having your soul left. They will take over. Oh. And I've dealt with plenty of people that dabble in this stuff. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know how dangerous it is, and then they're wondering why they're going in and out of reality. They're, they, they're, half of their soul is trapped somewhere else, and there's some people that have come to me and said, we didn't even realize that this was going to happen. They, re they didn't get into the, the black magic part, but other people they're associating did. It's a very dangerous situation. Your whole life can get destroyed. <clears throat> um there are some people who say, oh, we can handle it, we're, you know, we're fine. Well, those people I probably won't hear from. And, and you know, and if you can figure it out, fine. But still, you're responsible for what you unleash on the planet. And, you know, there's that story about the Dybbuk box where um, World War II, a bunch of women in Poland decided it would be fun to uh, deal with this entity that they conjured up. And then they said, well, I don't know, maybe... This is going to cause some problems. Let's stick it in this box. Do you actually believe an entity is going to stay in a box? I mean, binding spells? What is that? They yeah. laugh at that. Those oh, things yeah. can't be bound. 
And I don't care what anyone says. And in, in, in probably um, others are going to say, well, you know, that's not our belief system. You're not supposed to talk about this stuff or whatever. You have to tell the truth. They're, they're volatile. That means that at any given time, they can do something that is unpredictable. So what do you do? I, I don't like bind them. I don't. I ask for help. I, th I think everyone that has to deal with these things in an honest way, you're either their ser you become their ser their um their servant. Like the jinn, we think we control the jinn. No, the jinn would control us. They're they're astral beings. They don't go by any rules or guidelines. They're in the astral. It's when they come into the planet that they they're supposed to go by some rules, but a lot of them are. <laughs> they're, they're lawless so anyhow this is the stuff that's getting unleashed this is the stuff that has to be cleaned up this is the stuff that um, we do not need to be aligned with and if anyone's telling people and promising and teaching the same stuff over and over again and it's not coming to pass then why do you keep listening to them why do, you, why do people continually contact me and say, I should be listening to someone who has a, a, I don't know, five to ten year track record of talking about the same thing and nothing actually happens of what they're saying. And so let's wake up and let's, let's you know, really start evaluating that this is only a handful of people that I'm hearing from and that, that do this and some of them that are constantly sending me stuff like this are not listening to the shows. They're not growing. They're, the, to them, this is like some kind of uh, competition. I'm not here to compete with others. If they want to do their thing, that's fine. But those that are listening here, it's my responsibility to share with you the truth. Is, as I know the truth, I don't know everything. But what I do know is to, to help others. And it's time for us to be wake up and, and realize that some of the problems that we're having is a result of attachments, embracing belief systems that are not accurate, um, dabbling with stuff. There's, there's a whole a whole bunch of uh, different things. And just liberate yourself. We have the tools online to go and um, do revocations. We have meditations for people just to help you, yourself feel grounded and I probably should have more, more tools out there, but I'm trying to um, help people get realigned, reset to your proper timeline. Every time that you um, dabble in certain things or even listen to certain people, you can be pulled off of your timeline. And I've had to work with some people on that. And they, it's hard for them to believe, believe it or fathom it, but... Um, being pulled off your timeline can make a significant difference. So, for example, um, the people in the yellow vests, they need to stay on their proper timeline where they belong and where what is the highest intention for humanity for them and um, to make sure that no, they don't latch on to some other thing that pulls them off the timeline, which ensures that they will not be successful in getting through. And that's why they constantly bring in distractions to make sure that we do not achieve our goal, whatever that goal may be. So never take that lightly. No. <clears throat> no. Well, there's only two types of service, Jess. Service to self, which is the case of most of these people that are, you know, have a big O. Uh, an ego bigger than this planet, think they are better than you know than anyone else, and then service to others. And I know what I chose: service to others. That doesn't mean you deny who you truly are, but you can only be in service to others when you fully embrace your true divine self. That's the true nature of who you are. But right. I mean, we're dealing with all these people that I mean, it's a competition, like you said. I mean, most of the people identify themselves, like we we say, the release technique. You know, you identify yourself to your mind and to your ego. But is it really what you are? 
I realized all these years, I identify myself as Chris with a whole history of what I am, what I've done, my choices, my family members. And then you realize through the session, wait a minute, my mother has been adjunct as a reptilian. My father is this, my sister is that. I mean, none of the family members I had around me were in any way, shape or form connected to the divine. Or they were maybe once, but they all got adjunct. So it was a whole stage situation, this incarnation, where they pretty much organized the whole, set, set up your whole life uh, surrounded you with all these dark beings to handle you and control you. And then you realize that even the girlfriends you had in the past, the relationship, none of them were true divine love. Love bite after love bite after love bites, trying to control you, handle you. And then when eventually you're like, wait a minute, enough. I don't take that crap anymore. I will not allow anyone, uh, don't consent to anyone to control my life, control my mind, my emotions, and my my timelines, and my relation to source, my relationship to source, guess what? They get upset. And now start another plan. It's to, to try to destroy you, invade your space, hijack you in the dream state. I mean, it, it, it just, it's just insane. But guess what? As I said, be brave. It is definitely not something that will happen... You know, it takes a little time. Um, it is shocking. It took me two years of I don't know how many sessions. I mean, the number is it's astronomous. But uh, to finally realize that waking up from that nightmare, and I don't say I'm all done. I mean, it's, it's a process. It's a marathon. It's not a race. But what matters the most from the first day I met you, Jess, and even before I met you, I had one goal in my mind. I want to be in service to others. But I guess in order for me to do that, I need to free myself. And it doesn't, doesn't matter how long it takes. It's, it's a decision each person has to make with themselves, and the universe will help you. They will not force you. They, they're different, you know, our guides and, and these amazing beings we work with will never come to you and tell you, oh, you know, the love and the light, and if you give me your power, I will help you, I will be your savior. If someone tells you you're going to be your savior, run away. Because it's pretty clear that obviously they have another, I call it the, 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 the evil triangle, victim, victimizer, savior. They work together, hand in hand. And in the meantime, in any of these cases, you never in full control of your destiny and, 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 I mean, you give your power away all the time. Why are you so afraid of? Being a human being is something, I want to discover what it is. I want to discover the true potential that is mine. I know my higher self, I know who it is. I want to be, all I, want, I don't want anybody's power, I want what is mine. What belongs to me, that was used by all these dark beings for so long to fuel their own dark dominions because they didn't have that connection with source anymore, so they have to take from those who have, without consent, without agreement. Stealing, illusion, deception, lies, magic, enough. I am excited for the highest, my highest potential and the highest potential for humanity. I think this is one of the most beautiful adventure there is. Sometimes I might not say the same. Some mornings when I wake up, I'm not going to lie. But I mean, sometimes all you need is just, you know, do a session, face your biggest fear, because I'm not going to lie. There are moments where sometimes um, I might, you know, not feel very comfortable with what I hear. And then, you know, just more than anyone, you have seen me. I mean, I'm pretty uh, open book when it comes to my emotions. I mean... I've, I went through all kinds of emotions, but guess what? At the end of the day, what matters for me is my connection to source and be able to, 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 to I say to, to clear myself and regain and reclaim everything that is my divine birthright. Always have been and will always be. Well, I tell people, you know, I, I don't tell anyone that they have to come to me or they have to come to me repeatedly or anything like that. I've never done that. No. No, it's a choice. No. But yeah, I think that you saw that you were breaking free of things, and you you go people go as deep as they want, and I have some people that will just keep on going until they really feel liberated in different areas, and uh, then there are others that I only you know do um, spend one time, and they have what they need, or they come back maybe six months or a year later. But I think the whole point is is that. It is up to each individual how liberated you want to become. And in your, your situation was quite serious because of some of the groups 
that you are connected to and and um, people that uh, get hooked into uh, some of these groups that um, are hooked in uh, to some kind of ETs or whether they're, you know, whatever they are and it turns out they think they're they're light beings and they're bene- they think they're benevolent and before you know it they're pulled um, into the astral in a weird way and uh, then their life, not them getting hijacked but their lives get hijacked and uh, they are and then they try to pull away from the group and it becomes worse and uh, then they have health issues their personal life gets turns upside down there's all sorts of really scary things that happen and and I've dealt with quite a few people that you know try to um, pull away from different groups that they got hooked into and and when you do that it's it becomes a very very serious issue uh, some people can you can uh, some people end up going uh, into a place like um, have have are are uh, categorized as having psychological or mental issues um, because they're hearing their voices. They're they're just you know pull it pulls the soul literally out of the body, and um, and uh, they're quite bombarded too. Then the astral beings begin attacking them. And, it, and, you know, come into their home and start altering things and moving things around. And what, what you one would call a high paranormal poltergeist activity, it, it gets really serious. So, you know, there, there are people that, that go through that. And then, you know, in order to get back, it, it takes a bit because um, the damage that they do is 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 really bad. That's why, you know, I think we're learning. We're all learning in this process. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And I know some people might say, well, okay, what is all, you know, what it has to do with the Yellow West? But, I mean, it is super connected to what's happening to Yellow West. Yellow West is just an example of humans that realize that they cannot live like this anymore. They, they, they just don't understand yet. I mean the whole the whole picture, of course. But um, if you think of what's happening in France right now, like one of the things I wanted to talk about is that they're poisoning their people, literally poisoning their people. We know, you know, water, this and that. That's you know, the whole planet has the same problem. But it's deeper. I mean, in France, and I might be existing in other country, but I can only talk of what I know and what I'm aware of. They have changed, of course. Um, they put cyanide in the um, tear gas, which is creating huge amount of sickness over time. We don't know what's going to happen. What's the real effect on the public? The Notre Dame that burned, um, you know, uh, was it a year ago now? Um, the lead that was, uh, the roof was made of lead. That roof, when it burned, normally the amount of lead that's possible, you know, that's supposedly not lethal for human or dangerous for human, right now around Paris and around the Notre Dame is 500,000 times higher than the normal doses. Now, we know it's connected also to the Rainbow Children. There is definitely a lot of situation there. They close a lot of schools. A lot of children are extremely sick. Um, of course, <clears throat> they don't want to reveal the real numbers. And whoever is revealing the real numbers suddenly see the police at their door, the computer confiscated. The guy that did the whole ex- um, test on cyanide because he realized, wait a minute, something changed in the tear gas and it, it, he's a biologist. And he start to buy some 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 test that you can buy online to check your blood and they check the blood before and after the protest and they realize that if you do it within 30 minutes after being you know um, uh, breathing these gas they could see the cyanide but after 30 minutes the cyanide disappeared and it turns into something else and they don't know what is the effect now not just the yellow vest i mean the police everyone is breathing that and it stays in the air for a long time um, the second thing is there's a, co- uh, a factory a company, a big corporation called Seveso. Seveso is a chemical, um, it's like a specialty in chemicals, and they have factories everywhere in France. There's a whole list without that the one in Brest, um, no, it's not Brest, it's Rouen, sorry, Rouen, the north uh, east of France that burned uh, three months ago. 
um, was so bad because the government was telling the people to not eat vegetables, not drink the milk, but in the same time they were saying, no, 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 it's nothing. But we still don't know the components of what type of chemicals burn there and what would be the effect for, for, the, for, 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 uh, for the people. I thought I was the only one, but I discovered that in the same three, four, 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 four uh, six months, sorry, there is multiple uh, of these factories that start to burn out of nowhere. And we discovered that eventually there was some um, security plan and strategy, you know, that was put in place to check these all these factories for a long time. And suddenly, uh, maybe a year ago, they changed everything and literally canceled any of these protocols for security. So right now, all these factories are burning everywhere in every corner of France. They don't talk about it. But when you look and you see the list of how many factories of this same company, Seveso, are burning, you realize, wait a minute, there is something going on here. So they're poisoning the people to Notre Dame, to the tear gas, to the chemical factories burning. And some of these chemicals are lethal. What is the goal here? That is one level. The other level is they're preparing and they try as much as they can through the, the, the EU going down, all the banking system going down, all the banks in, in the world, literally, but especially in France, are um, buying from the Federal Reserve, and it's the same here in the US. Um, they're asking the Federal Reserve and uh, so the central bank in Europe for the European community to loan them billions of dollars every night. I mean, it is to a point where they even have a negative interest now. If you take a loan, you pretty much make money. That's how it is. And they were saying, you know, that is that is a sign that's really bad because it means the economy is ready to crash. So on the other le on the other level, they're trying to create a whole um, a collapsing of the economical system on the planet because, of course, that would definitely um, create a you know. I'm in a post-apocalyptic situation. It doesn't have to be a nuclear war for that. If the whole economy goes down, it's a, they try on every single level. You can see their agenda here. And it's pretty much, you know, they, they try everything at once. And what's going to stick is going to stick. So the situation, what they're really trying to push here is more serious than what we think, what the medias are saying. That doesn't mean it's going to happen. That's what they wanted to happen. Things can be shifted very easily. I'm pretty sure it's one percent, or maybe one percent of the population had the same intention. You know, the highest potential for humanity, freedom, sovereignty, and reconnected to the galactic, to our divine galactic family. Things can be pretty much uh, shifted, like uh, Andronicus was saying, or road and in the uh, Andronicus uh, transmission. Things can be shifted very easily, but that's what they want. They want to hijack the movement uh, that's that's rising everywhere in the world, where people want their freedom. They try to hijack it and entice the anger, because they want to hijack that that whole thing and turn it into a violent revolution, and you know, bloody. I'm sure, because humans will. I mean, if we remove, and I'm a true believer of that, if we remove all non-human influence on this planet. All of it. Humans will not hurt humans. All these angers, all these wars, all this bloodshed is always connected. If you follow the, you know, the the the, 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 the connection upstream, it's always connected to some agenda of non-human groups. It can be Pleiadian, Draco, reptilians. I mean, Anshars. Doesn't matter what it is. Vampire. I mean, they all have the same agenda. And behind it, you will find the big players, and at the very top of it, always Michael. Sorry, come back to this one. I'm not forgetting this one. <laughs> he knows. He knows. I know. You just keep on digging, and you look a little deeper. And what's beyond that one? What's beyond that? One? We have to look deeper. It's yeah, like well, zoom out. You need to zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, and see the whole picture. They want us to just look like with a um, binocular, you know, this, this, and, and see just little thing. No, 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 no. Open your eyes wide and you will see what deeper. Go behind the layers and then there's an illusion there. Remove it and there's another reality and then another, another. And believe me, they are master in hiding themselves. And I want to go to the core of it. Yeah. Oh, well, you yes. know, it's funny because we, we call Michael the script writer. 
because he's mm-hmm. writing these scripts then and, and mm-hmm. we're all having to deal with it and uh you know and if and i i was talking to someone and they said that well you know i'm having a serious problem and i said what's the matter and he said i'm trying to um put out my positive manifestations and they i'll say like you know i you know i'm, I'm grateful that i'm going to have abundance and that um and then all of a sudden other words come in like in that all of the population will be destroyed and he's like, I didn't say that, but it's almost like um, his thoughts are creating a frequency and are almost be- being projected. And then in the end, it, something else was getting added to it. And then he says, you know, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm healthy and I'm doing well. And, you know, and then uh, like <laughs> some, some like really horrible, like terrible statement, like, um, you know, and that, uh, you know, I don't know, other, other people are going to get harmed in some way or another. And so he's like, I don't want that going out there. And he says, I keep on finding that anytime I try to say something positive, someone else is trying to rewrite it. And I'm like, oh, geez, you know, and I've, I've seen that happen myself, you know, and I know exactly what he's talking about. And I'm sure others yeah. have yeah. too. <clears throat> Me too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's almost like you're saying something, and it's like, then this these other words come in, and you're like, wow, was is that my consciousness? Is that, so, you know, you start questioning yourself, thinking that you're projecting something really, really horrible, and you're like, wait a minute, no, I didn't say that. Or sometimes it's actually, you can hear, like it's a different voice, <laughs> and it's like, wow, I can't believe this. So someone is trying to not only, um, well, I, this is, gets back to Michael because we call Michael the master script writer, and it's like I had this this view of him writing these scripts of of how the earth should be and and how um, you know I guess you know at a certain time then we're supposed to get destroyed through and go into a one world order and you know and just this whole thing is written out and so and if and even people are you know aligned with it and saying yeah you know and this is supposed to happen then we're all supposed to get destroyed and then but we're going to be saved and they're not and you know and it's it's this whole thing of you know kind of um a type of brainwashing and so um seeing this this come about it's it's shocking it's so shocking and we need to get out of that script and uh, there was, I don't know if it was Geico, one of the one of the companies did a commercial and they showed everyone walking around with a script in hand and then they go to sit down and and one person would say something, someone else would say something and they're all reading from the script of what they're supposed to say and if someone goes off the script, they all stop and look at them. Like, wait a minute, you went <laughs> off the script. And yeah. that's exactly what's happening is when you get off the script, people look at you and say, well, you're crazy. You're not supposed to be doing that. And you're like, well, wait a minute. Where is this coming from? You know, um, why is it that freedom of speech with all of you? And then when when we say something, it's like, no, no, you, you, you guys aren't right. Because we're not reading this script. That's what I figured it out. So, yeah, <laughs> we're getting off the script. I know. We don't want his no, script anymore. No, we don't want it. And, and and suddenly, you know, we would talk about Michael. I'm thinking, wait a minute, wait a minute. There is others that were not mentioned here. What about Poseidon? Yeah. I mean, that one is also a big player in what's going on lately. I mean, we have discovered him because I don't want Michael to feel lonely here. I mean, there is a lot of other players. I mean, Michael is like the big producer, right? He writes the script and have all these main characters. I don't know to what extent, you know, they are connected, but obviously, you know, these main character, Poseidon, Dionysus, of course, and there is a lot of others. Samara, now they have these new uh, movie star called uh, Joachim Phoenix. Empty Vessel, obviously, perfectly groomed to be the perfect uh, actor. And uh, we find him connected to all the dark ones, right? I mean, yeah, I, don't know I mean, he's been on. around for a long time, and there's been roles that he's played that, I mean, he steps right into the, that that energy. I mean, it's clear that the the soul, or whatever was in the soul, is vacant, and the and, and the energies just come right through, and are able to manifest. Um, you know, this this persona, like when he played, I think it was um, 
uh, that movie, uh, The Gladiator, and he plays this really insidious uh, Roman emperor, Commodus. And yeah, it's it's uh, he he steps right into a persona. Some people, you know, it, if you're an actor, you, you really emulate the ability to do that. But uh, trust me, I'm sure it takes a toll. You know what, Jess? I was just talking to someone this morning. I said, you know what? For the longest time, I thought, wow, these actors are, re-, you know, before we started all this, these actors are really good to take, you know, to be able to be in a role like that and express the emotions of a certain personage. Well, I realized that what's going on really is they are experts in making you believe they're actors, but indeed what they are, they're just playing their own roles. Yeah. Always have been. I mean, I mean, if you think of Frank Underwood in in the in the House of Cards, which is you know Paul Serene, he's playing who he is. He's right. not playing, but he's pretend to be an actor. Mm-hmm. It's complete opposite. And I mean, it's almost like the whole reality is upside down. It's pretty much to see things from different angle. And as you wake up, like wow, I mean, this is insane. You want to have a little list of all the demons and all the dark beings there is pretty much connected to all the crap happening on this planet? Well, check Hollywood. And all the singers, you will have a big list right there. I mean, yep. they're not hiding. They're promoting their agenda and propaganda right there. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> I mean, when you start to see things from a different angle, I mean, it's, it's, it's shocking. I'm not going to lie. But I mean, they are so, well, they thought they were so good. But I mean, for a long time, yeah, they've been able to play around without uh, any um, interferences. But this is a lifetime when we get we gain our freedom. This is this is the one. You don't right. want to lose the show. This no. is the one. I mean, how mm. many incarnations I was entangled with all these idiots, and <laughs> suddenly I, I don't want to miss that show. I mean, this is amazing. This is incredible what's going on here. And I know it's it's not maybe not easy. Most most of the people not to understand what I'm saying here, and I, I really hope you will. But I mean, it's. It's definitely we are unraveling layers and layers of illusion, illusion, deception and lies and start to see the real player for what they are. They don't like it. No. Guess what? Guess what? Don't care. It's time for them to be revealed for their crimes and, and be sent to high sport. Right. You do an amazing job, Jess. I mean, obviously, it's not easy sometimes. I mean, when people say, I want to see things, I'm like, yeah, I don't know if you want to do that. Because guess what? You might see things that you might not like. <laughs> I don't know how you do it sometimes. It is. It throws me off. You, you can see when I get thrown off. <laughs> because it's like, it's like, wow, I've never seen that one before. I mean, it's it's, it's pretty hard sometimes. It's, you know, they're not... What, what we perceive is, you know, we see the facade of certain people that are very powerful or whatever, and then you see beyond that sometimes it is, trust me, you never look at them the same way after that. No, no. It's literally remove all these filters that we had in front of our eyes. I mean, yeah. it's an image, of course, and be able to see things where they are. And um, But, I mean, the truth will set you free. So, yeah. at the end of the day, it's beautiful. So, I mean, there is a lot of uh, protest, obviously, that got very violent, like in Chile and um, Bolivia. I mean, in Chile, I was wondering, 26 days of protest, 200 people lost an eye, 30 people died. I mean, wow. it's insane. And you know what? The, the, the thing is incredible. The president of Chile went to Macron and asked, can I please buy all your rubber bullets and all your flashball and all your stuff? And he's applying the same tactic as Macron is using, I mean, the, 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 the you know, the, the, the police and all that. Same thing to the media, because one reporter from Chile started to talk to one of the Yellow Vest uh, representative and, and uh, in an interview, and they were like comparing notes. And the person from Chile was like, wow, this is the exact same thing that's happening here. How is it possible? Now Macron becomes like the, the to-go person if some, you know, these dictators or whatever um, have their people starting to fight back. They go to how do we abuse block. the people? Yeah, how would you abuse the people? <laughs> he's going to have his own manual, right? And he's giving Us. lessons for the countries. You need to respect the people and their human rights. Wow. I mean, the sorry, the balls of these guys are incredible. It's, incredible. it's a, a self-imposed illusion. I mean, Dionysus <laughs> is really good at that. Dionysus is really good at 
yeah, let's let's uh, burn everything up, and then you know we can come in as the hero and say, hey, we're going to give you money to preserve mm-hmm. that land. Mm-hmm. That he's really really good at that kind of stuff. You know, they're, they're, all of them are, are fantastic at create a problem and solve a problem. Oh, because man. then they get to be they get to destroy everything and then come in like a hero in the end and which is ultimately um you know dealing with their their narcissism and ego oh, because yeah. as long as you love them right what do we discover we discovered that this whole thing with um uh Rhea and uh you know these Sabelle and all of these Diana and all and and many of these other uh, deities that they um, require that you love them if you do not love them then um, you will get harshly punished <laughs> so it's like well why what you know wouldn't they want us to love them on our own or but it's almost like it's it's some of them it's a romantic love like you can't be in a relationship with anyone else um i i just you know was dealing with this other person and peter was involved and i I won't get into the details of it but i will say that it was an astral being that was imposing herself on this man and and you know he says well peter when will i be free of this this person and peter says never it's like it's like are you joking i mean is this is this serious because uh, you know once these uh astral beings hook into certain people it's it's a nightmare because then they sabotage everyone that you're with they all of these horrible things and um it it doesn't happen to everyone but certain people have a, a soul history of being involved in certain things and it happens to those people in particular but unless there are those that want um, certain types of um, uh, power in the astral, then, you know, there are a lot of different things, scenarios that can happen. And one of them is, is you can have one of these beings feel that they own you, like married to you. And uh, I've, I had um, a point where I remember I was signing a marriage contract in my dream somewhere, um, which was really bizarre. And I remember waking up and saying, I can't believe that just happened. And and, and it actually, it, it's binding. It's literally binding in the astral. Mm-hmm. So you're like, well, why is my life, you know, I feel like I can't do anything. I feel stuck or whatever. Well, you probably really are stuck. And, and that kind of thing's happening. But, yeah, um, uh, re, the, they, they force... They, they're very forceful. They, they kind of, you know, want some kind of weird commitment. And uh, so and then you have to figure out a way to get around it. And it's, this is where it gets into multiple, <laughs> multiple sessions because they yeah. go layer upon layer upon layer and it gets very deep. Yeah, it is not. Yeah, I, I mean, my perception of um, you know the way they work and the construct that they have built for millions of years, I had no idea how complex it could be. I remember I was so innocent when I talked to you the first time because the first time I, oh, you know, we have removed this being or this being. I thought, oh, that's good. I'm fully free now. Uh, no, no, they exist in multiple micro realities, constructs, paradigms. I mean, they make it so complex, and this is why it's amazing to work with. You know, guides in the universe because they can see these things and know when to clear what, at what time, in what order, when to stop. Because if you go too far, too too deep, I mean, the backlash can be um, can be sometimes uh, not pleasant. They don't like it, of course. No, no, they Very don't much. like it. But but each time you you oh, were yeah. able to become freer, you know, it's oh, yeah. like one thing after another. I mean. Um, yeah, I remember both of us when we first met a couple of years back, and I was in a weird roommate situation. You were in a weird roommate situation, oh, yeah. and and we were both like, you know, this is crazy, you know. And we realized that the entities behind these people were were had some kind of control over us. I got free of it, and then um, after once I figured out how to do that, I helped you to get free of it. Yeah, and it's, I, my it's roommate was semi-assy. 
Yeah. I mean, that was, I mean, talking about all these fake lovers, I had a bunch of them. I made a collection of all these idiots. You love me or I destroy you? You love me or I destroy your loved one and I destroy everything around you. I mean, that's very, very, I mean, appealing if you think about it. Bunch of bulls. Just crazy. And in the dreams, they talk about marriages. You remember all these dreams yeah. when I have marriages, uh, uh, sex, and this and that. Well, last time, yesterday, I end up with my, how can I say that, masculine organ in my hand, detached from my body. That was a little gift from uh, Joaquin Phoenix, because I guess he was very pissed that I'm helping someone right now that I cared about. I mean... It's uh, every day there is this, you know, uh, <laughs> and a lot of news. And, and you think, oh, you know, I guess I've seen it all. Nothing can surprise me yeah. anymore. And guess well, the what? entities, you know, like when we say walk, well, it's like not literally. I mean, obviously, he's not coming over here. He's not saying anything to us. And, and if you asked him straight out, does he know who we are? He doesn't know. No. Because it's not him, literally, the no. actor. The entity, no. it's sort of, it's the same thing as Paul Serene, you know, um, working through Kevin Spacey. Mm -hmm. Although I've seen Paul Serene working through, um, who's that, uh, the guy that's involved with um, this whole... Um, Game of Thrones? Yeah, go, going after Trump. A oh, uh, a um, you mean Aiden Gillen? No. No, the other guy that's really going after him pretty hard. Oh, Adam Schiff. <laughs> that's that's Paul Serene. <laughs> I He's looked like at him and I said, I know him. I said, how do I know him? I said, oh, yeah, I know him. And oh. I started looking. I mean, his eyes were a dead giveaway to me. I said, this guy's he's out of his <clears throat> mind. He's an astral. Yeah. And, and we discovered also that they were connected to, um, what was monarch. There? to the, the monarch, monarch and the, and the Citarian, yeah. too. Yeah, um, it's like, what in the world's going on here? And Nancy Pelosi, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I don't know when the last time her soul was there. I mean, that's, uh, and, and they, they want it. They, they, yeah, they, they're trying to completely annihilate. Trump, they're trying to really just... Well, because Trump is going after um, you know, all this corruption and they have been involved in that for such a long time. It's yeah. going you know, to Ukraine and to unravel everything they did. So the only option they have now is to blame him for everything they did and try to impeach him for that. But I guess they have something coming for them. Well, there's... there's the things will get sorted out. I'm telling you that they're, you know... They're, I think they're a little surprised because they thought this was they were going to just skate right through this whole thing, mm -hmm. monarch, and when they we were just going to be like you know, um, you know the bread and circus, you know they're, they're tossing us a bone every now and then and thinking hey, you know I look at something shiny over here and you know they yeah. they were just having a field day with with oh, yeah. the planet, mm -hmm. and, and <laughs> finally you know finally you know people started to wake up and start looking at it, but. Um, we, we need to really disentangle deeper from Monarch uh, because, I mean, the people are starting to acknowledge the fact that that they do get, um, that there are my labs, they're starting to acknowledge and recognize that things are happening in the background. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, the dream space is, is being violated. This is not the way our dream space is supposed to be. No. So all of these things happening. And Monarch has been pretty much trying to lull us all to sleep, and meanwhile have us sell out our own birthrights and 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 um, allowing them access into our personal space and, and and so many other things. And they're actually having us support their work. There are some people that contact me and tell me that, oh yeah, you know, I went out and was stealing last night uh, with a bunch of uh, kids or something like that, and it's like. The monarch is recruiting them to work in the, in the astral for them. So, and, and even though they're they're dead set against it, they really don't want to have anything to do with it. But they're um, deep into this whole thing of of seeing how many people, how they can actually turn the turn um, everything up, turn it around on us. Oh, yeah. So that when we go to say, you know, you guys have committed all these crimes, they say, no, you did. 
we had we pulled you from the astral and dream space and then we had you committing the crimes and so um, you know we're off the hook we didn't do anything you did it and you agreed to do it and so this is something that they're trying to get away with because they're uh, they've been trying to convince to get people to agree and consent to things in the dream space and that's why I tell people do your rev revocations completely cut off from them and make them responsible for all the things that all the crimes that they're committing and uh, do, do everything you can to no longer support what they're doing inadvertently through the dream space of course not consciously mm -hmm. yeah they hide I mean they're, they're cowards they literally will take your encryption or your imprint as you would say commit the crime using you not aware of it most of the time yeah. And then they want you to be blamed for what they did. Or sometimes they even dump their whole karmic situation on you. So they can continue playing around for a while. Right. And uh, never have to deal with the karmic, uh, you know, repercussions of what they did and their crimes. There's, there's uh, so many different scenarios of, of oh, geez, the insidious yeah. stuff that they do. Yeah, Mo uh, Mobius has, <clears throat> has their own brand of, of what they're doing as well. Yeah. They actually take people into the future and have them doing stuff. It's it's really bizarre, but, but I mean, um, it's, it's the end of all these groups slowly, you know, bit by bit, and they panic right now. Yeah, because they know what's going on. Well, they they're pushing it to the impeachment because otherwise they could have just hijacked Trump like they do most presidents, mm. and um, it yeah it would have all been looking like a game. Everyone would have been asleep, and and you know they just would have skated right through. But instead, you know, Trump was not going along with it, so they're. Uh, you know, he's trying to expose the, the pedophiles and all of this other stuff. Now, I'm not saying he's 100% perfect. Nobody is. No. Um, but I'll, I will say one thing. Um, uh, you know, some of these others that they want in office are, are, are already puppets. So, um, Well, know. he's fighting against the Chinese. For example, um, Europe... It's funny because you could hear Macron starting to say, oh, you know, like like Trump is saying, you know, we want, we cannot give, you know, start to, you know, give all the power and let the Chinese buying everything in France. While he's saying that, they already bought all the airports, a lot of airports, everything, you know, all the, the, the French properties because they want to build their Silk Road, the modernized Silk Road. Now, if you go back in time, the Silk Road was a road where you have all the commerce, uh, the trading going from uh, uh, east to west, right? And who controls that? Well, control pretty much the trading. The trades everywhere and, and, and for, for, for that portion of the world. Right now, they are doing a modernized 2000, uh, 2000 version of the Silk Road. And what they did at the time before Trump started to put tyrants on them and they hit them really hard on the economy, um, they were literally, of course, stealing uh, uh, inter intellectual properties. That's one of the things they were doing. But better than that, they were also buying um, in every country companies that are, for example, managing the airports, company managing the tolls on the, on, on the highways, um, anything connected, anything that was connected to trading, to circulating, circulation of, 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 of merchandise, so they could control the whole thing. It's too late pretty much in France. I mean, they, they, that president of China went to every country in Europe and even Italy that was fighting against supposedly, you know, the oligarchy and, uh, you know, all these, um, all these um, oppressors supposedly. Uh, fine, because Europe is such in debt, they need to make money and that's the only way they can make money. Do you know that the Chinese even control a big portion of the nuclear, nuclear plants in France? I mean, it is bad, and I think wow. what Trump is doing. Yeah, it's not that. about Democrat and Republican. It's not. It's, it is just just a trick for people to fight with against each other. It's way beyond that. And um, what he's doing, Trump, he realized. But they just, I just learned like a month ago that uh, the United States printed fifty-two or fifty-two, 52 billion, a trillion dollar printed. Right. That's a lot of money. Think about it. I mean, it's you take all the money in the United States and and every single to the, the little quarters and 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 dimes, 
it's not even half of it. Why? Because they realized that the Chinese had so much power, they owned so much in the United States, they could literally crash the whole thing. They're not there yet. Some experts in France are analyzing the whole thing and they say they're still investing right now, but they're preparing for that very step because the Russians and the Chinese stopped trading in the US dollar. So right now they kind of dis disentangle themselves from the US, from the US dollar. They trade in a different currency and they buy, 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 buy. And eventually, eventually you own so much, you can literally push a button and create a complete collapse of the economic and the financial system. So Europe is in big trouble and Trump is fighting it. And a lot of these, you know, Schiff and all these guys, well, I mean, they definitely had a lot of a lot to do with the selling out of what belongs to the, the United States sovereignty. And they get caught for that. I mean, there's a lot going on. It's, yeah. it's it's just insane. And in the meantime, the country is not moving forward. So what's happening in the Yellow Vest is just a, represent, a representation of what's happening a little bit everywhere in the world, right? It's a sample. It's not just we focus only on the French people. Now, my love is, of course, when I saw these videos today, um, these last three days, I never felt so much love for my brothers and sisters, but it extended. I would say it's more my love for the human race as a whole, not just the French people. Right. And that's why we do it, because we understand that it's it's really not just a, um, it's not uh, embra embracing just the yellow vest, but humanity as a whole. That's what we're yeah. doing here. I mean, mm -hmm. yellow vest is, is a point of reference. Yes. to reveal that this could happen anywhere and actually it is spreading to other other nations where people are awakening and saying hey we deserve more than this yeah and so um uh, we are stewards know. of this planet and it's time for us to 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 take a role seriously again you know this planet was under the control, literally was a gigantic Walmart for these idiots. They came here and start taking and, and make us work for their own gains. I mean, literally, taking our resources, polluting the planet. And at the same time, when I'm talking about when I'm saying using our resources, not just in the soil, our divine resources, because they use our consciousness and the beautiful things we have as human to fuel their agenda and their system against us. Right. I mean, if you think about it, it's evil genius, but it's 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 pretty much true. So you ask myself certain points, so that means I was participating unconsciously and not willingly to make my life a misery. And the one of my brothers and sisters, I mean, personally, I take responsibility here, meaning not that I feel guilty about it, it's just that, okay, well, if that's the case, what can I do to fix this? The first the first step is disentangle. Like you said, do your vacation every day, every morning. If you're shocked or not, doesn't matter. What can you do? What your part? What can you do the best you can in your part? Play your part in that whole scenario that's going on here to free, you know, to take ownership. And that's the first thing, take ownership. Don't be a victim. That's something that for a long time in my life, I thought I was a victim until one day I realized, wait a minute, if I'm a victim, I will look for a savior and I will have a victimizer. And no, I'm getting out of that uh, triangulation. I'm not a victim. I'm a divine being. Misled, sure, but it's time for me to take the keys of my life back in my hand. And if I have the keys of my life back in my hand, guess what? I can find the solution now. I'm my own master. That is why they push through the media that victimization all the time. In France right now, they are pushing for the last three weeks to a month um, the, the whole thing against Muslim. Are Muslims bad? Are Muslim extremists? Uh, should we allow people to wear that, you know, that little uh, shot on their head because, you know, the woman, you know. I mean, they, they push that because they, want, they are preparing the next election, which is Macron and Le Pen. They said it. 
oh, eventually we're going to be together again in the next election. They're preparing that and they're destroying, discrediting all the others might be on the way. So they're preparing that whole thing. How can they do that? They did it with Chirac. They did it before that. It's always the same thing. Create fear, division. Muslim are the bad guys. And everybody is going to go for Macron and Le Pen. And at the very end, everybody got scared and they voted Macron. That is the only way he can ensure himself to be reelected. They use that trick so many times. And I really want French people to not fall in that trap again. To literally wake up and see what's going on here. Right, and they and they will, but it's not just the French people; it's everyone. Everyone on the planet. I mean, here we talk about the French people, and I guess you know, in Ukraine, they they elected a, a comedian. <laughs> the guy's not a politician, and here in the U.S., he's not a politician; he's a businessman. Right. So, I mean, pretty much a way to say he was not corrupted and groomed to think like a politician that can literally, in five sentences, full of, surrounded by silk and, and, <laughs> and velvet, you know, literally hypnotize you to make you believe that they care about you. But in the meantime, they are stealing everything in your pockets while you don't, while you don't pay attention. Do you know but that since a year, Jess, the economy and the situation of the Yellow Vest of the French people got worse? Yeah. Supposedly they give $17 billion, supposedly. Well, yeah. But in the meantime, they're voting all these laws. This is why they're focusing on the Muslim situation, because they vote all these bills that are literally making it worse. By the way, there was a protest for the firemen. The firemen, literally now 90% of the time they go out, you know, is not even to extinguish fires anymore. Since the hospital emergency don't, I mean, are overwhelmed. They don't have any budget anymore. Doctors are killing them. I mean, it's, it's, it's bad. Guess what? Everybody called the 18 in France, like the 911. Oh, uh, I cannot, uh, I cannot take my remote control. Um, um, you know, I'm, I'm sitting in my chair. Uh, I called the fireman. I mean, stuff like that. And the guys are like, listen, they, they, they literally destroy the budget. We cannot go out anymore to do our job. People are dying. We are called for anything. So they, they had the protest a month ago. Police and, and firemen are working together. Every time there's an accident, a fire, you have the police and the firemen going together to the site and taking care of the situation. So they work together. They're like brothers. Guess what? The government made sure that when the firemen protest 10,000 on the 40,000 um, uh, career, like professional, 10,000 were in the street and they were very, you know, they were chanting and everything. Suddenly, out of nowhere, same thing as with the Yellow Vest, bombarding the police, bombarded them with the tear gas, beating the crap out of them. I mean, arrest them. I, it was shocking. Shocking. They couldn't believe it. They were like, what's going on? We work with these guys every day. What, what happened to them? That's what's happening. So we have the nurses, the hospital uh, personnel, you have the truck drivers, you have uh, the, the trains, you know, truck trains, you know, uh, uh, in France. So right now, they don't believe in the, the, the union's representative because they discovered that the union representative in France of each union are receiving their orders from the EU, meaning they are not representing the people. I was thinking of an analogy. I know for those who saw the movie Braveheart. Have you seen that movie, Jess? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Very... So when the Scottish, you know, have the, the you know, supposedly William Wallace that brings the Scottish army to the battlefield, you have the king of England in front, the oppressor, that is there. And most of the time, the lords, the, the Scottish lords are going first in the middle of the battlefields and they, they, they do negotiation. And most of the time, the negotiation is... The king will say from England, will say, all right, so um, I will give you lands to the lords, the Scottish lords. I will give you lands. I will give you lands and castle and this and that. And if the lords are satisfied, they will be like, okay, all right, we retrieve our army and there is no war anymore. Right? That's exactly what's happening with these unions, the, the leaders. It's the same thing. They go, do meetings with the government. They receive whatever they receive. They're very, most of the time, all Freemasons. And... Then they say, all right, it's okay, we, we stop the strike. Well, guess what? Now the, the union members, the people, the citizens, realize what's going on. And uh, they decided to do a huge, huge national strike on the 5th of December. Everything stopped. Everything. That's the f biggest fear the government has. That means everything's going to be paralyzed. 
from every corporation in the country. That's how most of the government, most of the time, collapse. And that's what's going on. And it doesn't have to be violent at all. And I think that might be, a, you know, I'm not pushing this or that. I'm just saying that is smarter than to yeah. go in the street and lose an eye and a foot for what? You play and within the system, so it's you can never really go forward with that, you know. And I want anyone, yellow vest or non-yellow vest, or any citizen in, on the planet that want to fight for their sovereignty to be safe and be able to do it without having to lose to lose anything, to be armed in any way, shape, or form. You know, there's a yeah. way to shift that whole that whole reality here in timeline without. Uh, bloodshed because they want that the others they want the bloodshed let's not give them what they want right i agree so yeah, maybe we, we, we can have an intention maybe for you know real arrest and every citizen or for for thing. all of the peaceful protests in in the true genuine causes for humanity for uh liber liberation sovereignty from oppressive um uh, entities that are running certain regions, governments, and so forth, that the entities um, will, well, you know, they're not supposed to be here in the first place. So uh, we ask that they be extracted, brought to wherever they need to be, not ruling humanity, but maybe uh, interfacing with their own kind elsewhere. Um, and because of that, they have... Uh, they have an advantage, many advantages over humanity, so they just, it's, it's not on an equal playing field. And we have to get into a higher, some of them are just, uh, don't even belong here, they're from uh, 2D or so, you know, and they, like I said, people have opened up the door too much that, you know, we're dealing with these things. And people say, well, you know, that's impossible, 2D can't be. You know, those entities can't be here or they can't be on upper levels. Well, um, I don't know how they got there, how they did it, but I do know that they are there. So that's just not an argument anymore. It, it exists. And if uh, people don't want to look at that, then, then you know, you, you won't be able to fully protect yourself. So um, I would say that that we, we just need to remove the entities from being in, in charge and ask that humanity be liberated enough so that they can make their own choices and allow each individual to decide whether or not that they're going, going to walk forward in, in consciousness and in uh, more of a benevolent situation, resetting each one's timeline into their proper place and time and allowing humanity to, to regain their connection to um, their their divine so sovereignty in aligning with the God source properly without any intermediary, anyone pro proclaiming to be God or anything else like that. And, and finding that, that inner peace and in place where we can actually um, interact and not have to feel like a war is constantly looming over us or destruction or that people have to go through great levels of, of suffering. I mean, Fran, the French people have suffered enough. It was a lot of this is unnecessary. And sometimes it might just take that a few of us, a few more of us say, hey, we embrace you. We know that, you know, whether uh, if this is your culture or not, but as, as a human race that we can uh, embrace this. And um, so... Let's have this intention, the highest intention for humanity, the highest intention for those that are looking for sovereignty and liberation, and also those um, that are there to oppose it. We ask that their efforts become neutral, that they don't have any say, and let's ha see the natural course of this happening without interference. And, and so be it. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Well, that was a full um, two hours. <laughs> yeah. Did you just send something over? Yeah, I'm starting to send some uh, some videos to 
you know, trying to see what I can send so you guys can add that to the to the comment section. Okay. Um, just there will be a few. I mean, anyone can check online and just tap one year anniversary yellow vest and you will see a lot of videos there. But it's funny how you don't have too many uh, English channels showing what's really going on. Literally, there was, I mean, the police had a, a, did a great job all these weeks to arrest and beat up uh, all these reporters and, and, <laughs> and journalists. So I guess they get a little scared now. To come yeah. Back. Yeah, let's ask for protection of those that are just trying to bring forward the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, because people have a right to um, know what's going on and then those that are blocking what's actually happening in, in some of these protests... You know, let's let's make sure we get that that information coming through. So we want to keep things open. So we'll set an intention for that as well. So we're grateful that that the universe is providing and protecting all the things that we need, and protecting those that want want to um, share with what, with what is actually happening. So um, so it looks like. Uh, <laughs> We're going to, it looks like we can wrap this up. And uh, thanks, Chris. Uh, we're going to put a, plenty of links in there. So make sure you look through all of the links and share your comments and ideas. Um, I don't need people to agree with me 100%, that's for sure. Uh, nope. Some of you come in and have different perspectives. I love it. Keep mm -hmm. uh, sharing. And uh, thank you for uh, listening. Thank you so much, Jess. I feel better. <laughs> oh, good. That the thing was cooking and cooking for days. I was like, I need to talk. <laughs> uh, All right. Good. Well, it's it's well overdue. It's been a while. So, sure. and, thanks so good. much. And may, maybe we can uh, start seeing things moving into a positive, yes, and progressive nature instead of this weird treadmill we've been on. Oh yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Wish a wonderful day or night or evening, depending where you are when you're listening, and um, have the highest intention for everyone listening and for every human being on this planet, highest potential of manifestation. And I wish you a beautiful day or night, and I will see you soon. Bye. Okay, thank you. Have a good day, everyone. You have been listening to Androna Talks Radio. Join us on YouTube channel Jessica Errol Morocco and visit her website at www.readingsbyarial.com.